Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We have one more incredible summer miracle story for you. This one is a great one, and I really hope you enjoy it. So let's jump right in. Today is going to be a great day. We are here with Jeremiah Emmanuel. Welcome. Thank you. Right. Um, some people might not know you unless, you know, they have been watching the worship stage lately, seeing a soloist up there. Uh, what's up with that? I Didn't do, know you had pipes, sir. I know. I, I do what I can. I mean, it's it's something I've been able to do my whole life. Sing? Yeah. Superpower. Sing, sing and, and just stand in front of people. I have some experience with that. but You're doing well, sir. But yeah, it's one of those things like I didn't ever learn how to professionally sing. Like I did some like show choir stuff when I was like eight. But what does that count in life? I mean, it so, counts. <laughs> not, every I mean, person in show now. choir is just sad right now. Like, yeah. it's nothing. <laughs> like, oh, it means nothing. These medals were for nothing. But, but yeah, it's just, it's just something I'm doing now to, you know, it's a gift and a talent I have. And so for it to be used in the church as a gift, it's not something I could keep to myself anymore. So just, just trying to be that. a blessing. Well, how did it happen? Was your wife like, hey, he's cool? got he's got some pipes. We need to get him on stage. Yeah, so it was more like eight years of being, like having worship team leaders in hot pursuit. Like, we heard you sing that one time. <laughs> you know, you need to use your talents for the Lord. And I'm like, uh, yeah, well, no, I'm not going to do that. All <laughs> right. I mean, I guess you can tell the Lord no. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's your call, that, sir. That so let's choose other right? paths uh, of obedience. He probably no. had to pray it out, you know, I pray, did. get before the Lord. Is like, is this cool? where you want me? But is it cool standing next to your wife singing in front it of you? It is cool. Isn't that awesome? It is cool, for, except for the fact that it's your wife. And so you're like, hey, oh, wait a minute. We're on stage right now in front of countless numbers of people in, yeah. in the congregation and watching online. So I can't be goofy like I normally oh, would. Oh, I would. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life, but yeah. I would encourage Goofy because I would, I would, I would, I would, you know, like, oh, they're having fun up there. You know what They'd I mean? Be like, they're, by the way, this is Jeremiah's last time singing with us. <laughs> He's been such a blessing. Uh, you know what? We're going to go a different path. You yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> so we've decided. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Well, we are doing a summer miracle series, right? This is the whole point of these podcasts is that, you know, I think Pastor Justin said it great about the Revel with Revelation quote is it the by his blood and the power of our testimonies, yeah. you know, and I think this summer series is it's amazing how many people are in this congregation or in this house that have unreal stories of just testimony after testimony after testimony. And we don't get to hear those all the time, but there's such a blessing to hear, which is why you're here. Yeah. And so for the people that obviously we're joking around and stuff, we know each other. But for the people that don't know you, can you give us a little bit of a background with your here, uh, like, how long have you been at Heritage and JSMI in general? Yeah, so we moved here from Oklahoma uh, in 2015. Started attending the church here in July of that uh, of that year. Moved down here on Fourth of July. It was crazy. Yeah. So, like, were there fireworks? This is my yes, question. On the way yes. In, I was yeah. like, now I know this is a sign from God. Look at the fireworks on the way here. He's welcoming so, us. To yeah, the promised land. He's welcoming us. So we got here in July. Uh, you know, got planted in the church. And then October of the same year, I uh, ended up working for Jerry Savelle Ministries in the packing and shipping department, which, you know. Well, you did, know. So did you come down here for Heritage or just move to Texas and found Heritage? Yeah, that's yes, a great that's question. question um, so we actually moved here just for the sole purpose of serving the church. We had attended, uh, we came to a service in June of that year, and uh, we came down actually for mine and Jessica's anniversary weekend we're like, what do you want to do for an anniversary? We're like, actually, I feel like the Lord wants us to go down to this We're random go to church. church. And I don't know. He said we'd be blessed when we come down here. So we get to the service. Pastor Justin never even preached. It turned into a whole worship thing. And people were at the altar getting direction from God. It was awesome. And so then afterward, they had a, a youth fundraiser luncheon. We stayed around for that, even though we were planning to just drive back to Tulsa. And uh, while we were there, I, I just felt the word of the Lord come to me saying, hey, I, I want you guys to move down here uh, and serve this church. That was the whole reason we moved here. So yeah. I didn't didn't have a guarantee of a job or, or anything, just wanted to be obedient. So I, I turned to Jessica during the lunch. I said, by the way, uh, we're moving here. And she's like, huh? She's like, okay, when are we moving? I said, we're moving here in three weeks. And she's like, Okay, so and did you have kids at the time? We did. What year was that? Yeah. So how old were they? Twenty fifteen. So uh, let's see. That's eight years ago. So my oldest Audrey would have been seven. Kylie would have been four, and then my son Elijah would have been two. Oh, 
I didn't even know you that too. I was only I was only aware of Elijah. I know it's because I keep it together, even though I have three children, so it doesn't seem right. I, see, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, one, you don't look old enough to have three kids. Yeah. One, and then two, I was like, I've I've had the pleasure of of, of teaching Elijah, Elijah. And I've never I've never seen the other two. But okay, now this, yeah. this story is even crazier than that. You yeah, had those yeah. kids of that age. So three kids under the age of ten, and God's like, hey, move to Texas, and I'm like, okay, when in three weeks. Now back in Tulsa, we we'd actually already been kind of ready to move somewhere because our lease was up, but we we didn't know where we were going to be going or anything. So everything was in boxes, ready to wow. be moved. It just didn't know we were going to a whole brand new state. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. Okay, so that's that's unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> like hey, I'm, it's like the whole uh, Pastor Danny was like, I was told to move. Those stories are so crazy to me. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, okay. So you get down here, you join Heritage of Faith, you're, you're doing those things. Summertime miracle. Okay. So to get to that, I'll have to backtrack just a little bit. Feel free. So same year, 2015, which was like in retrospect, like my year, um, I'd been dealing with different issues in my body, different health issues, primarily my back. So from 2011 all the way up to that year, 2015, I dealt with excruciating back issues. Uh, I'd been doing a move all the way back in 2011. I thought, man, I, I might have just tweaked something, lifting a couch or a box or whatever. I go to my doctor. They're like, okay, well, here's a couple pain meds. You know, take these for a couple weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll see how things are progressing. Well, we got to three weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. And nothing's getting better. Or the pain's only getting worse. Hmm. So this is still back in 2011. They're like, all right, well, at this point, we need to go ahead and do x-ray. Uh, we need to do an MRI. We need to check out what's going on because something is not normal. Because that was even on pain medication, right? Yes. Wow. And they, they'd even like doubled the amount of, they tried me with, and it, it would not get rid wow. of the pain. I got to the point I could not sit. I could not stand for long periods of time. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I can't sit. I can't stand the, the only way I could do anything was to try to get a break by like laying on my stomach. That was the wow. only way I could get some relief. So do the x-ray. They're like, this is not very clear. Go to the MRI. They find out that in my, the lower part of my spine that I'd had two discs that had bulged together, <gasps> it fused together. And then the two underneath that had, had begun deteriorating rapidly. So they're like, uh, this is like your L4, L5 or L4, this? L5. Yeah. Those were the two that, that deteriorated. They're like, you've, you've got like 60% of your discs left. Wow. So I'm like, well, what do you do with that? That's like your worst nightmare. You go to the doctor for something that seems small and then they're like, Oh, by the way, no, it's, it's a major issue. Mm -hmm. So, you know, talked about it with Jessica and we're like, well, what do we do? So we tried physical therapy uh, went on, you know, different things to lose some weight to try to alleviate it that way. And nothing was working. It got worse and worse and worse. All the way up to February 2015. This, this By this point, I actually had to quit a normal job. I couldn't do an office job because I couldn't sit for long periods of time. Uh, so Jessica had to stop being a stay-at-home mom and actually went back into the workforce working a full-time job and part-time job just to keep us supported because I, I couldn't do anything. So, I mean, I, like I just told you, kids are all under 10 at that point. Yeah. Uh, I, I became a stay-at-home dad for them because they weren't old enough to go to school. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. Wow. So what happened? What did God do for you? Were you here at the church and you heard a word from him or were you at your home or when you received the miracle? So with the back thing, um, February of 2015, this is really important. Um, I'd not been walking with the Lord this whole time. Like I didn't have any interest in having a relationship. Like I knew it was up there and he would help me if I was really in the gym. That was my belief. That's what I thought. And so uh, February, 2015, just noticing some different things not going well. I'm like, man, I, I wonder if I'm even saved anymore. Like, mm. and so I was like, well, I, I don't want to die and then go to hell. I want to go to heaven at least. Uh, I'll at least have that to look forward to if things don't change. Cause at this point they said, you're going to need surgery that'll maybe alleviate things for a while, but it'll eventually degrade. You'll, you may not be walking later. Oh, wow. And so I, I just surrendered my life back to God said, Hey, uh, you know, like brother Copeland, I said before, take my life and do something with it. I'm not doing anything with it. So from there, a couple months down, I'm spending time in the word, learning how to commune with God, learning how to pray and 
and develop a relationship as actually being his son and him being my father. And this one night I'm worshiping, I at that point had a office chair, the only place in the house I could sit because it was reinforced. And I'm listening to that one song from Hillsong, uh, The Stand. And there comes a part in the bridge where it says, you know, I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned. And when I sang it, I heard, you know, in my spirit, it wasn't audible, but I heard the words, don't be a liar, stand up. Hmm. And I was like, well, that's weird. I literally looked around the room to see if somebody else was there, but I'm like, this is not audible. It's something else. And then I went to sing it again. And uh, the Lord's like, Hey, don't be a liar, stand up. Now, by this point, this is almost impossible to do. Mm-hmm. So I braced my arms on the chair as best as I could. I stood up. Yeah, worst pain I'd felt to that point. And then all of a sudden I feel this warmth go from the top of my head all the way through my body and down to my feet. And in one instant, all the pain was gone. Wow. All the issues with my legs were gone. I was able to hold my own weight and I'm like, what is going on here? It was fire. God. It was awesome. And so what did you start doing? Okay, so what first, doing? first, like, like, what are you doing? Backwards? I mean, like, first thing I did, I started crying because I was like, oh, to go, at, you know, four yeah. years, you've had constant pain. Mm-hmm. So I cried first, and then I got myself together, and I was like, okay, I, I don't know what to do because this is like one in the morning. I wasn't sleeping much because of the pain. Sure. I went to bed, woke up the next morning, and kind of looked around like the pain's not back. The best night's sleep you ever had. Oh my gosh. Yeah. After four years of no sleep and you're helping watch kids all day. Yeah. Well, you know what that's like. Little kids, (laughs) littles, they'll keep you busy. I got nothing. So (laughs) I hear it's hard though. You've been around kids for for two hours straight. So you you kind of know. So day four comes, no pain. Three weeks comes, no pain. And it's just an amazing thing. Doctors can't explain what's happened. They're like, we we have no idea. Did you go get... Have you gone back and gotten like MRI or any kind of like medical? Yeah. So with that in Tulsa, I went back to them. They checked again. They're like, we cannot find the (gasps) issues that were there before. Nothing. Yes. No no issues. How amazing. That's awesome. So I'm like, well, what do I do? I'm like, I'm already, you know, like, like a cat with catnip. I'm, I'm so (laughs) just jazz that I can walk around and actually have a life again. Yes. And so we get to like June where the Lord's like, Hey, I want you to come down to heritage for this service and you'll be blessed. I'm like, cool. So we come down, the Lord says, you're going to move here in three weeks. We're like, that's crazy, but okay. <laughs> and again, it wasn't easy because there's no possibility of a job. We don't know what we're going to do, Yes. Mm-hmm. but we know to be obedient. Yes. So we get down here. I took a temporary job. Everything goes great. The Lord supernaturally provides for our needs and then October of 2015, like I said, this was like a crazy year. So October 2015, uh, I'm up here helping clean in at the church because the the part-time job I was working, I didn't have to go in morning. So I'd come up here and clean, just serve and, you know, sow a seed. I had a friend from church come by and says, uh, you know, Jeremiah, there's an opening over in the packing and shipping department at the ministry. I think that's a that'd be a good job for you. Now, again, this is a miracle because I hadn't really worked a physical job in Oh, eight years. Yes. Sure. Just due to different issues. So came on board and, and from there the, the rest is kind of history. But I've since that day I felt the anointing come on my body. I've had no pain, Praise no God. issues with my legs. Wow. I mean, it's just Praise I'm the Lord. A completely different person physically. It's amazing. Wow, that's awesome. So like people who don't know what pain is, like physical pain, like unrelenting, constant pain, don't understand like what a back injury does to you. Like, cause I'm sure you're doing like sciatica, like just like lightning bolts all the time. It's constant pain. There's no relief. Mm -hmm. And what is your faith walk like through that process? Like throughout that, those years of that pain and agony, what was, you said you weren't walking with the Lord or you were? Yeah, I wasn't. So I really had no hope because I mean, just the way that I was raised up, we were Christians, but we weren't believers, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of like pastor John Ben Dixon had preached in church, you know, you're a good Christian, you know, you do what you're supposed to do, but that's it. Uh, you know, so there, there was no faith walk for me to have, even though the Lord was waiting the whole time. So once, you know, I, I started walking with him again. I mean, to be honest with you, I never even got the notion to focus on my healing because I'd gotten so used to the pain. I didn't think to believe for healing anymore. It's your identity. Yeah. You're just the guy with back issues who can't go anywhere. They never see you. And so, you know, from there, it's like, wow, you're faithful. You were waiting to heal the whole time. That power has been available. Yeah, because he loves you so much. 
What would your encouragement be to other people who are believing for breakthroughs or healings? What would you say to them? So really there, there's kind of like three things I thought of in, in knowing we were going to be talking today and they're not major things, but number one is just focus on God. The, the problem that you have, it, it's not your identity. It's not, it doesn't deserve all of your focus. It doesn't deserve all your attention. When we put our eyes on God and seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things are added unto us, let alone anything you're deficient in. Like I was with my healing. It, he makes up the difference. It shows up. When I was worshiping the Lord that night, he showed up because my, his praise inhabited where I was. Amen. That's a promise I have. So number one, you know, don't focus on the problem. You know, worship the solution. That's who he is. He wants to fix everything. Um, number two, if it's like a deal where you've been waiting for your healing, when's it going to manifest? Um, remember that it's already been done. Jesus has paid the price for your healing. First uh, Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes we're, we're healed. Yes. And so that's the thing is it's not something you have to ask God for. It's something that shows up and dr is drawn out from your spirit. Yes. But number three is stay, stay joyful. Amen. Stay joyful. That's, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. That's so cool. Like you have medical proof of your miracle. Like, you know, a lot of people have miracles, but like, you're like, yeah, I have this MRI and then I have this MRI. Mm. And in between those was the Lord. It's amazing. <laughs> and that's it. It's amazing. That's so great. So to this day, you still walk around, no pain, no pain, no ailments. Like no your back issues. is fine. Oh, never, oh, never had another Never had another incident with it. Never had another issue. It's it's wonderful. That's amazing. That's so cool. I guess that'll lead us to this. And this is the, like our motto here at Heritage of Faith is making winners in life. It is, and it's something that we like to ask every person on the, the Winning Conversations podcast is what does that mean to you? Oh, man. So I've heard that motto since we got here in 2015. And so what you do is when you hear something like that, realize it's not a slogan for the church. It's a prophetic word you can walk in. Yeah. And so for me, what it's meant for me and my family is to not only go from a place where you expect God to help you, but trust that God will help you to excel and to thrive and to come up to where, you know, it's, if you have people in life who are very obviously seem like they're losing, let his, let it, let him touch your life to where you're very obviously a winner. You're doing well, you're stable, you're peaceful, you're encouraging, you totally confident in his ability to show up for you. And I can just say from what Pastor Justin and everybody here, Dr. Savell has imparted into me is there's no way you can lose when Jesus has destined you to be a winner. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us. We loved having you on the podcast today. What a great miracle story. I know it's going to encourage a lot of people. So thank you again for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. It's not Thank you again for joining us. That wraps up our summer series, Summer Miracles. We hope that we've really encouraged you. If you missed any of them, go back and listen to the four of them because they are just incredible stories of God's goodness, His favor, and His mighty right hand working in the lives of the people at our church. These testimonies are designed to encourage your faith, and we also want to hear yours. So in the show notes is linked our testimonies page where you can read more testimonies and also submit one of your own if you have it. So next week, we get back to our uh, regularly scheduled winning conversations, and we look forward to having you listen then. See ya!